Hey, and uh, we're back home again. Last week I was live from the Viva Vida Art Gallery in the Point Claire Village. If you don't already know me, I'm Heather Boyd Wire, and every week I do a live stream on YouTube troubleshooting ideas and designs for wire art and jewelry. So I'm just going to pull up the video on my computer so I can see who's hopping on. And as always, um, be sure to comment. If I miss your comments, uh, repeat the comments or, or you could definitely chat amongst yourself. And I'm going to try to answer any questions that you guys have as well. And this week, a big shout out to Polly in the Facebook group, The Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. She requested a, um, to help, uh, for me to help her work out a design for an earring she bought years ago and she wanted to replicate it. So I'll show you a picture of the earring that she wanted to make and then we're gonna go for it and, um, and see what we can do about that. And hey Peggy, how are you? So in the meantime too, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of projects I was working on this week. And uh, some of you know, I do a lot of kids arts and crafts. Hey Ken, welcome, welcome. So this last uh, Sunday, I was at the local library doing a craft workshop with some kids about uh, Valentine's crafts. So if you need a last minute Valentine's Day craft to do with the kids, this is what we made. It's super cute. So we started with a little pom-pom and put little pipe cleaners for eyes. Hi, Suzette. And then there's like a little heart shape for the feet. That's fun foam. And then little pom-poms for the eyes and little googly eyes. And the mouth was an idea I woke up with that morning. And have you ever heard of warm fuzzies? No, what are warm fuzzies? Hi, Judy. And so um, the, these little, I had this idea on that Sunday morning to do get a pipe cleaner, string on a few little uh, uh, plastic beads for the teeth and surround it with the pipe cleaner. Hey, Clarice. And so that was really a fun project to do with the kids. They had a blast. And then after it inspired me to try something with wire with the same thing. And so here's like a little face. I'll try to put it over here so you guys can see it. I'll put it against the, the doorway so you can see what it looks like. So here's, a hey Leslie. So here's a little wire face that I did with the same concept of doing the the uh, teeth with little seed beads and the mouth is plastic uh, tubing and the eyes are miracle beads. So Brenna says, so cute, yay. Oh, I'm missing something here. Uh, gotta go have a great show. Thanks for hopping on. Warm fuzzies, forgot about them. Yeah, I don't know what warm fuzzies are. I Maybe I've seen them before, but I don't know the names. So hey, Kimmy, Judy, Missy, awesome. You guys are all hopping on. So um, I'm going to flip the screen. Thanks, Missy, for the, for the compliment. We had a teacher that would give us warm fuzzies when we got a good grade. Oh, that's so cute. So let me flip the screen around. And I'm going to get uh, get all set up here and make sure everything's centered. And I will show you a picture of what we're going to work on today. So we're going to go here. I'm going to turn on my computer. That's my dream kitchen. We're working on changing up our kitchen a little bit, but uh, not sure I have the budget for that, but we'll see. So here is the earring design that Polly sent me a picture of. I guess she already had one similar and she wanted to do something like this. Now this piece in the middle is probably a stone, but I've made one out of Fimo just to replicate it, just to have something to work with because these, this is very typical of um, earrings you can buy in Mexico. In fact, my, my husband used to go down to Mexico and import jewelry and sell it on the street. And this is uh, probably from Taxco, uh, Mexico, which is where they do a lot of the, uh, it's, uh, and it's made with alpaca silver wire. Now, the alpaca silver wire is the type of wire they use in Mexico for doing their types of jewelry. I'm not going to be able to flatten these right now. I don't, I don't have the tools with me to do that. But I thought I could show you guys the basic way to do this type of earring. So um, Judy says, is there a place I can buy wire peg patterns? Well, I do have a bunch of patterns for the tutorials that I've made that I sell in my Etsy shop. I could put a link to that, but there, I'm sure there's a lot of patterns, free patterns online as well. And then the Artistic Wire Jig Company, like the Beat Along Company, would have patterns as well. But I can look into it and see if I can find... When you guys ask me questions, I'm going to write some um, ideas down and just so I don't forget. And I'll look up some more 
ideas for wire jig patterns because there's lots of them out there. And then on my videos, you can always screenshot the setup that I have on, on the videos. So what we're going to do for this is I'm going to st I'm going to use some Let's just move this out of the way a little bit. I'm going to move use some of the artistic wire um, here, the 20 gauge. And I'm going to show you guys what I was working on for the actual, uh, the actual like template. So I was using Fimo and I'm going to show you how to do that. So I don't know if you guys have used, let me know in the comments if you have used Fimo before. Okay, so I have some little bits here. I've already like kind of cut the little bits of Fimo off the package. I'll show you a package of, of what I'm working with. So this is actually, it's it's not Fimo, it's the Sculpey brand. So this is the Sculpey brand here. And I'll get the pieces that I already did. Okay, and Sorry, I had to run to the kitchen. So these are the pieces I made this morning that are gonna work with this. So Brenna says I have, but I'm not skilled at it. Yeah, it just takes, just takes some um, practice. And Kathleen says, hi, I'm new to your website. Awesome, that's fantastic. Well, we do DIY wire art and jewelry videos, videos every week and then the live streams. So see, this is a little piece that I've made that's similar to the piece in the, in the earring from, uh, uh, from Polly. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to do it. So you would just take little pieces of the the Sculpey or the Fimo and just another sneak peek to the guys that people who are just hopping on. This is what the our ultimate goal is to make this earring. So we might not get all of the details done. So I'm going to just bring this over and what you want to do when you work with Fimo is you're going to take some little pieces Sometimes it's a little hard. If it's hard, just massage it a little bit. Just work with it a little bit. Okay, you're going to massage it around. So we're going to get some blue. Looks like there's quite a bit of blue. I have a little bit of silver. So we're going to mix some silver. And you really just like squeeze it in. I actually used to do a lot of female stuff with the kids at the local school. And, uh, and they loved it. Kimmy says, I love the artistic brand wire. Yeah, it's wonderful and uh, it's really um, nice to work with. And it's also low tarnish, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't tarnish. So that's a really good thing too. So what I'm doing to try to get the colors that were in the original piece is I've put in blue, green, black, and a bit of silver. Just the silver gives it a little bit of a sheen. And I know there were some people in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club that were sharing pictures of wrapped uh, moons that were super cool. So I can, uh, you can definitely do the shape of a moon with something like this. Uh, this is, yeah, this is a polymer clay. This is Sculpey, but you can also buy other brands. There's a Fimo. Uh, so yeah, so let's just, we'll go like this. And then how I like to do the, um, when I work with the, the, to get the colors like blended together, you want to kind of roll it out. I used to have fun with this with the kids in the uh, school because I'd say make a snake, right? So it's almost like playing with Play-Doh. You just roll it out to make a snake. Hello from Mississippi. Hey, Karen. And then you can ra roll it up like this, like sort of a little snail. And then after that, you can put it in your hands and just whoop, roll it around. Now I'm a little restricted with my um, how much space I have under the camera here, but I'm going to do what I can. So once you've rolled it around like that, if you find the colors aren't blended enough, you could roll another snake and, um, and then do that again. So once you have like the, the amount you want, I didn't make this very big. I should have made it bigger. So then you take a round form, nice happy face cup, and then we're just going to roll it out. Now, a lot of these Fimo kits actually come with, um, they come with, uh, rolling pin, little mini rolling pins and stuff, but you can just use a jar or a uh, cup. So then you're going to roll it out. You want it like an even thickness. It's not quite a quarter inch. It's somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. So from there, you can use cookie cutters. Like these are way too big, but if you have, you can actually get 
uh, Fimo size cookie cutters to cut out shapes. So you can get like little mini ones like this, but this is the all I have right now. So I just thought I'd show you an example of, of what you would use, but you can definitely, you can definitely buy like mini, mini ones. So Kelly said, just hop, just hop, on awesome just jumped on awesome <laughs> fantastic so what are we making we're making little dangly earrings but right now i'm making the um the female piece to go in the middle so here's the earring i'll keep refreshing you guys that who people are hopping on this is like a, a mexican style uh earring uh, Polly shared the picture in the Facebook group and wanted to know how to do it. So I'm, I'm trying to troubleshoot the idea here. Now, because I don't have a little oval uh, cookie cutter, I made my own. This is embossing foil. You can actually buy it at the art store. And then we're going to just, I just cut a long piece, curved it around. I used my, my Sharpie to, to make it curved. And then what you want to do is when you cut out your piece, you're going to hold this together and just push it, hold it here, make sure it keeps its shape. You can do simple shapes like this, but like I said, you could definitely buy Fimo cutters in the art store. So we're gonna press it in there. You're gonna remove the rest of your Fimo, okay? So then you have your piece, like here. Looks like a centerpiece, yeah. So so what you knew, you're gonna do now is if you have to just kind of Press these in with the warmth of your finger, it's going to smooth it down a little bit, okay? And now what you need is you need the groove around the outside to be able to uh, hold it uh, in place with a wire. So what I'm going to do for that is I'll cut a piece of a 20 gauge wire. I think it's gonna be the best. So we'll cut a little piece of the 20 gauge wire and hold your piece and very carefully this is before you bake it, you need to do this groove. So before you bake it, make sure your wire is nice and straight, okay? And then, hey Terry, so then we're going to just take this and just gently make a little groove around the outside. And so you're gonna just gently rock it back and forth, rock it like that, and make your way around the outside of the shape. Now this might take a little practice, but it's super fun. Uh, Fimo is really fun to work with. I don't know what Fimo is like now, but Sculpey uh, used to be softer than Fimo. I think Fimo has improved their technology so it's easier to work with. Uh, but when I started uh, when I started out, Fimo was really hard to work with and stuff. So so you've gone all the way around around the outside, and you see there's. I, hopefully you could tell that there's a little groove in there. So that's going to make it easier to put a wire around the outside. So that's it for that. And then what you would want to do is bake that. So you would bake that, I think, just follow the instructions. It's about 275 for 15 minutes. It depends on the size and the thickness. So these are the pieces that I already baked. Okay, these are already baked. And so what I would do uh, either before or after you make your earring piece, you're going, you would varnish it. So this is the varnish, it, it's Sculpey varnish. And what you would do is just, I'll just show you, I'll do one before and maybe one after. So you just take the varnish, once it's already baked, dip the brush in there and then you would just like brush it on. And you can do both sides, okay? You could do both sides like that. Maybe let one dry before you do the other side. And then that's going to make it nice and shiny, okay? So that's that's it for getting that piece prepared. And then you would let it dry. So let's work with this piece and see what we can do to do that design. I'm going to bring back the picture so we can see what it looks like. And I actually might do a little drawing of it uh, so we know what we're doing with it. So here's this, I'll just grab a little paper and we can draw an image of what it's going to look like. Okay, so I'll just get, I'm just going to get a paper, we'll remove this. We're gonna work with that, I'll move this right over. I'm gonna move this here. And let me just do it with the pencil for now. And so, 
it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but I think it's just to show you the style. So Inga says, hello, and Jane, having trouble watching as the camera keeps refocusing. That's the problem with the live stream is because I live stream on my phone and the focus goes in, in and out. And I really apologize for that. But um, that's sort of the nature of the technology. And I've tried to do it with other uh, with my camera and other other technologies. But so far, I haven't found a, a method that's effective. So I apologize in advance for the camera going in and out and if it's some people it might if who are sensitive it might make them a little bit nauseated and I'm so so sorry but my other videos weekly videos are just filmed right with my good cameras it's just the live streams that we have this problem so for those of you who can handle it I much appreciate it and I'll hopefully figure out an easier way to do this in the future so Kimmy says is that varnish the same as Mod Podge Yes, the, the, it's um, pretty well the same, except the only problem is I find Mod Podge can be really sticky. So if anything, you should maybe use acrylic varnish from the art store rather than Mod Podge because I just personally, I don't like Mod Podge, the finish of it. I find it gets really sticky. So, so far, this is exactly how the sample looks. We're going to do wire around the outside and then it looks like there's a little loop here. And goes down here's the silver bead and there's like a little spring here and then another bead or not a bead a little loop and then there's a jump ring whoop there we go get back here so here's a jump ring and then there's like three flattened pieces here okay I don't have my hammer so I don't think I'm going to be able to flatten them so does the varnish also go into the groove I uh, I wouldn't put it on the groove because you don't want to fill in the groove but the other alternative is you can you can um, uh, I lost my train of thought it, you can varnish it after the whole thing is made and then you don't have to worry about it so I'm just exactly following how this looks it looks like there's a piece here okay and the wire goes back and then there's a loop so this is a piece I have a feeling they're using a stiff wire to be able to get it to hold together the wire I have might be a little soft but maybe I'll use the brass wire instead it's going to be it's going to be um easier so Vakar says set sama hair okay I'm not sure what that means I wish I had a translator so so th thank you you're welcome so here's this piece goes here and then it looks like it's attached with jump rings. So actually the jump rings are going to hold these two wires together, which is great. And then we have an, another little loop here with a bead. So the beads, I'll just fill them in and then the other loop. And then this is a jump, another jump ring. Okay. So this is, I'm, I'm, once you start looking, really looking at the design and drawing it, then you can kind of figure it out. So sometimes when you look at a design, you get like a little overwhelmed because it looks really difficult to do. And so, but when you go ahead and, um, and like really analyze it and look at it, then it's easier to deal with. Actually, this, this loop is a little higher than that. So that's even, yeah, the more you look at it, the more you, you realize what's involved with it. So, so far, I think we're analyzing the design pretty well. And Inga, I do not understand. Are you, are you uh, conversing with someone else? Because I'm afraid I do not understand. Uh, and I have no translation button, uh, unfortunately. So, hi, Galen. How are you? So, so far, so good. So, there we go. And then it looks like there's like a little couple of spiral things here. It almost looks like a little, a little kind of S type of shape like that. So we're going to try it like that. There's more jump rings. I should have drawn the jump rings in different colors, but that's okay. We'll just go with that. And then two more jump rings here. And then it looks like there's like a piece here and a piece here. And then this almost looks like it's like kind of wrapped around. You know how sometimes you see there's vendors that sell those little pot leaves out of wire and they're done in that kind of formation, that kind of wrapped formation? Oh, you can't see it. Sorry, here, I'm going to bring it down. There's like those that little wrap formation like that. That's what it reminds me of. So it's the same kind of style. So we're going to have to figure out how we're going to do that. And then there's a hoop at the top. So guys, 
There's our drawing. Let's see what we could what we could do. I answered another one here. I was I thought that was it, Inga. I really appreciate that. That's super awesome. Thank you. So let's remove this one for now because it keeps shutting off. We're gonna put this one here. We're gonna get our piece and we're gonna go for it. Hey Yvonne, how are you? Nice to see you. So let me get my wire. I think I'm gonna, oh, that's not the right one. I wanna get my brass wire. I'm gonna use the brass instead because sometimes the copper one is a little um, lightweight. It might bend out of shape. So let's use this one. I'm good, awesome. How are your, all your granddaughters? They must be getting psyched up for the March break coming up soon. So here we go. So we're gonna cut some of this wire and I'm, let me just take, I'm just gonna take a little bit off the spool cause it tends, this one it's, cause it's a little stiffer, it tends to like really unwind from the spool. So if I go ahead, cut it, cut off as much as I think I need. Bean girly girls, yay, that's fun. Yeah, Mimi, my daughter, she wasn't much of a girly girl. She's uh, she's just her own little person doing her her own thing. She was very maternal though. She really liked um, she liked her stuffed animals and her dolls, but she was more like she would like really teach them and really be uh, yeah really uh, yeah she was different and she's uh, she's still her own person doing her own thing. So here we go. So let's th see what we could do about doing those loops to wrap it. And I'm just gonna cut a little piece to get started. And I'm gonna get my round pliers. Now, if I use my pieces, my round pliers that are a little bit bigger, there we go. So old hag73 says, hello, hi Heather. Now, old hag73, I've already forgotten your your real name. So you're gonna have to tell me again because I I keep forgetting I have to write down these usernames because I keep losing track of people. So when you hop on, if you have an unusual um, username, just please just just introduce yourself again because I always forget. And please don't take it personally because that's just my bad memory. So, oh, actually I have a list here. I have a list. Okay, we have Amber, Becky. So who else? So we got... Uh, Okay, so old hag, just give me your, your real name and then I'll be happy. Old hag is fine. <laughs> oh, but it's Nina, awesome. <laughs> there we go, you've got a good sense of humor. So now we're gonna take this and uh, Yvonne says 14 girls is a test. Wow, 14, that's amazing. I just had one daughter, so so that's it was much more low key here. So Galen says, my name is Galen. Awesome, good to hear, that's that's much easier. So now I'm gonna take my round pliers and just do these little loops around the outside. So let's go for that. We're just gonna take these and whichever end is maybe a little bit smaller and just start. We're gonna form these first before we put them around the, the groove, okay? So this, you're just gonna have to eyeball to make sure they're more or less equidistant apart. So this part, and then you can slightly curve them as you go. So rather than doing like a super straight line, you could slightly curve these around as you go because ultimately you will be curving them around that piece. So we'll just, as we go, we're just gonna, create a bit of a curve, even though it's not gonna completely follow the curve of the um, of the piece, because we're, that will adjust when we put it on. So Yvonne says, I made a beautiful mermaid with the name Old Hag, but she's beautiful, cool, <laughs> that's fun. Is it a replica of a Mexican earring? Yes, exactly. So Polly sent me a picture of an earring. I think she, maybe she bought it a few years ago or something, and she wanted to um, to make one. And I couldn't find a tutorial that existed already to help her. And so I said, well, I'll just try to work it out on the live stream and see. Because sometimes you guys request things in the in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club, and it's always fun to try to work out the designs and see what we can come up with. So I'm not quite sure how many loops I'm gonna need, but we'll just keep going around a little bit. And then when you have about as many as you think, we're just going to put this and just see. So it looks like we're gonna need maybe five more or something. Already it's looking super cool, guys. 
I'm super excited if you guys are going to try this. If you're going to pick up some Fimo and try to make your own little pieces, that would be really awesome. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. And you can make all kinds of shapes out of Fimo and wrap them with wire. That's the fun thing. You can make hearts, you can make moons, you can make stars. There's all kinds of things you can make and and embellish them with wires. So that's, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what, what you guys create. Or just simple shapes, you know, triangles, circles, uh, all kinds of things. So let's see if it's going to be big enough now. And I think we'll probably maybe finish it at the top. I could even ad adapt this design a little bit, but I think I'm going to try to make it as close to the original as possible. So there we go. So hi, I'm new to the chat and it's Laray. Okay, awesome. Hey, Laray, how are you? So we're going to bring this around here and let's mold it as much as we can to kind of follow the shape of this piece. So we're going to put it this and then we have the groove already made. So this looks like it's about the right size. Okay. So now the question is how we're going to attach this together so it's going to hold. And something I'm thinking I might do is finish it at the bottom. It might be a better bet. Let's see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to finish it at the bottom. I wonder if that's going to work. Like if I bring, I'm just gonna, I could always adjust those after. So if I bring this, uh, yeah, I'm going to bring this down. This will go in the middle. Okay. And then this one, I'm going to just, I, so I bent this at a right angle, if you're wondering what I'm doing. And then this one, I'm going to bend around. Okay. Just to finish it off. So this is so far what we have like this. It's just bent around here. And we're going to cut one end off. Okay. We'll cut off that one end. And let's do, let me just check, double check what I, if this is what I want to do. Okay, so if this goes in here, because uh, yeah, we want to get at the right amount of things. So, do, 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 yeah, I want it to be really discreet. So let's go ahead and just bend this off. I think I'm just going to cut this right off. This is something that you can experiment with the finishing it off. Looks like a flower. Yeah, it definitely looks like a flower. Okay, so once we have that, we just want to basically cut the two ends off. Okay, we just want to finish it off. Cut the two ends off. Let's get the flat, let's get the flat pliers just to stick it in. Now, something you could do if it's loose on your piece and you want to make sure there's one piece that's yeah, see, this is what I'm not sure about if I like the way that's looking because this is going to be kind of off to the side. This, I think I could probably improve on the way it's finished, but I'm going to maybe put that at the top. It might get more hidden by what's at the top. So there we go. So, um, hello, man, this is Asha. Nice. Hey, Asha, how are you? So if we have 14, see, this is the other thing. I probably should have put an odd number of of circles so the one in the middle would have been so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen yeah because then we won't have one in the middle so I think what we want to do is actually have an odd number of circles so bear with me I'm going to actually remove this okay we're going to make an odd number of circles I'd rather do it now and then rather than, you know, be frustrated with it later. So we're going to pull this back. Sorry if I'm going to miss some comments for a little bit. I just want to focus on this. And so rather than have this loop here, what I'm going to do is clip that off. Okay. And I'm going to stick this one. So into the last loop. Okay. So that way we'll have an odd number of uh, odd number of pieces. Now this one already broke a little bit, but I think we'll be okay with that. So I'm going to, mm -mm -mm. yeah. So let's just trim this one. 
Okay, I'm gonna trim this one and close that up. And then this one, we're gonna just bend into here. Okay, we're gonna try that. So we might have to adjust it a bit. I'm gonna just bring this one in here and then bring this one over a little bit more. Okay, and then we're just gonna bend this one into the last one. Okay, we're gonna bend that into there and just bring it around, okay? So what we have is we have an odd number. We have an odd number, and that looks pretty good. It looks pretty finished there. Ooh, I gotta take off my sweater, guys. I have a big, thick sweater on, and the sun's coming in the window, and even though it's winter, I'm still really hot right here, so there we go. So Ash says, I really love the way you make your wire drill. Thank you, that's so awesome of you to, to say that. So guys, here's the frame. And now we have to stick this piece inside. I'm, I'm happy with how it looks. So, and I've realized we need to do an odd number of, of loops. So now the key is gonna to be to get it in here. Now, the piece that I made out of Fimo is a little bit thick, but I think it's gonna be fine. So it fits, it just fits in there like a glove, which is super cool. So already it looks really interesting. So, so I'm pretty happy with that. And then if you find your loops are too spaced apart and it's not holding in place, just take your pliers and pull them in a little bit to tighten this. What it'll do, it's gonna tighten them up so they actually sit better in the groove and that they won't come apart. And then I think also when you add, if you add the varnish after, it's gonna help act like a little bit like a glue too. So now we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, and one, two, three, four, five, six, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh no, did I miscount? I think I miscounted. This doesn't count as one, that's why. Okay, so this one I have to make a little bit smaller because it's not gonna count as a loop. And then we're gonna have to, I think, move it around a little bit. Yeah, I think that's the problem because what I want is the eighth one to be at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, here. One, two, three, four, five, six, exactly. So this, this one here is going to be our one at the bottom. Let me just keep my pliers in there for a second, and then I'm gonna make this little piece here at the bottom so we know what's what. So for that, what we're going to do is take this this uh, wire here, actually, you know what? I need these pliers. So let me just take this out. I'm gonna stick a little wire in there so I don't have to count again and irritate you guys. And then what I'm going to do is make this piece at the bottom. So here we go. We're going to, and Aisha says, hi, how are you? Welcome, welcome. So we're going to cut this end here and just make a little, this looks like a little loop. So let's just make a little loop on the bottom, okay? And that's going to go into a jump ring. So we're gonna just make a little loop here. It doesn't have to be too big. So that's like a jump ring, but without uh, a pin on the end. It's more like a loop. So this is gonna be our bottom piece here. And now, the, remember there was a little spring on there? So let's take a piece of wire and make a little spring. So for that, what you can do is get a slightly thicker wire, maybe a 18 gauge wire, and then we're gonna wrap it around. Hi, Kathy. So there we go. It's the, we're, let's wrap this around here and make a little bit of a spring to go on the bottom. So you can buy metal springs, but it's so easy to make your own. So if we just go around here, I don't know how many times it was, not too many, maybe five. So we're gonna wrap it around here. And then when you wrap it around, if it's too hard to get off, the trick to be able to remove it from the, the uh, wire is just bend them back towards each other and that'll loosen it up and you'll be able to take it right off. So now we wanna clip these ends. We're gonna clip one end here. Okay, one end there and then one end here. We're gonna clip that end. Try to make sure they're like more or less in the same position, like kind of on the back. Okay. So now we have our little spring bead. So we've made our own spring bead. You, so you can make your own spacer beads, which is really cute. So no, my name is Asha, not I. Okay, cool, Asha, nice, that's awesome. So let's 
take our little spring, put it on here. Okay, so we've got our little spring. And then there was a little bead here. So let's just see what bead we can use because I could use metal beads, but I'm not 100% sure I have a metal bead. Let me just look at my metal beads and see if I have one. I might. I keep all my beads separated uh, within uh, categories. So I have a whole tray of metal beads that I'll show you. So here's my metal beads. So if we could find a couple of little gold ones, it would be perfect, but I'm not 100% like, here's a little gold one, but it might be a little bit too bright. So let me just look in my beads if I see, if I have three gold beads. What's, these are more crimps. So those are a little bit small. And if not, I can use regular beads. So let's just look down here. Oh, there's a fell on the floor. So I have a few that might work. Actually, these ones are probably from recycled um, earrings from Mexico or, or somewhere because they look like they're kind of that tarnished look. So that might work on there, but I would like to have three that are the same. So sometimes I take gold jewelry and just take them apart and then stick them in my bead trays. And they're fun to use for... Uh, different projects and stuff. I have a friend that actually goes to garage sales and finds all kinds of cool stuff at garage sales for, for making jewelry and that. So yeah, so I have a few here that might work. I'll just take them out and then we can compare them and see. So those are from the metal beads and uh, they might be a little big. These ones were, these ones were a little big. Those might be better though because these ones, well, I don't know. What do you guys think? There's a there's the shiny one and there's those ones. I think I'm gonna just go with the dull ones because I only, I don't think I have three shiny ones. So if we take this and put it on here, you love your metal beads collection, thank you. So here, we're gonna stick one of the beads on here. And then like I said, if you wanted to do colorful beads in there, you could as well. I don't know if I'm 100% convinced with this one or not but it might be okay. So let me just look for a sec. There's that one. I'm gonna show you guys if we did a different one, how it would look. Cause I also have these miracle beads that are always beautiful. So if I put a four millimeter miracle bead, it's more the right size, but is that gonna to be too bright? What do you guys think? The metal bead or the miracle bead? So I have blue. And I have green. So I could do either. The green is pretty too, actually. Oh, but it clashes. So metal. Okay. So metal first. Okay, let's do the metal. And then it's more authentic. So let's put the metal bead on there. And so we've got that and that. And then that's going to go on the bottom. And I've already lost track of my, uh, lost count of my things. So let's leave this one here for now. And uh, actually, I'll, I'll finish this piece and then we'll attach it after. So we're gonna do a jump ring next. We'll take our, our metal wire and do the jump ring. What are miracle beads? So miracle beads are my absolute favorite uh, bead and they are an acrylic bead and they have like a really nice glowy effect to them. Uh, I can link them up in the description. They're actually linked up in a lot of description of my lot, a lot of my videos because I use them a lot and I use this four millimeters, six and eight millimeter. And I use them a lot with my work that I sell on Etsy. I just find them beautiful. The colors are gorgeous. So if we make a jump ring, so we've just made our own jump ring. There's more uh, precise ways to make jump rings by using a saw to saw them evenly. But just for time's sake, I'm just gonna do it like this. So then if we, we're gonna put it here and then we're gonna dangle little three things down there. Now the trouble is I don't have my hammer handy to flatten the wire. So I think I'm just gonna make some little dangly things. I'm not sure, the beads are gonna take up too much space. So if I just go like this, I don't even know if you can just squish this wire. I don't think you can. With aluminum, sometimes you can just squish it, but oh. It actually squished. Oh boy, that's interesting. So I didn't realize it would do that, but apparently it just squishes like that. Now, if I had 18 gauge, it might work better. So let me just see if I have that in 18 gauge. 
because if I have 18 gauge, that might work. Who would have thought that it was so easy to squish wires? So I don't know if I have the, the brass in 18 gauge. I have copper, I have silver. So let me just try with, this is a Michaels wire with the 18 gauge, but let me just see for curiosity's sake, how it works with this one. So if we cut it flush, like straight across here, and then we take our flat pliers and squish it. Let's just see how it's gonna look. Uh, does anyone get weirded out by the texture of aluminum? You, you might have got a cheap brand of aluminum because some of them might be like cheaper than others. Yeah, I know what you mean though. So yeah, so this actually doesn't work too well with this wire, but it's kind of, it works a little bit with this. But what you could definitely do is experiment with squishing the ends, like hammering the ends like that, but I'm pretty sure that's a thicker wire that they used. So rather than do that, I think what I'm going to do is just do some little, just do some little twists or something. So if we just twist it around, maybe make some little spirals or something. Let's see if that's going to work, just to make it a little more fancy on the end. Okay, so if we just make some little spirals, that might work just to hang them down like that. We can try that. So we're just gonna go here and then just bring it up. So just to see how it works. And then we can hang some little spirals on there. So if we do one that's a little bit like higher, okay. And you know, how you embellish this piece is, is totally, you know, up to you. You might have some other ideas of different things to hang down. So let's just go ahead and then make another little spiral piece. And there's different ways you can make spirals. I'm just gonna do it this way. Sometimes I actually use a cone and then make the spiral on the cone. But I think just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to uh, just make a few pieces like this. So we're gonna just do three little spirals. And like I said, if you wanted to try with the hammering, I think it's really a cool effect and very typical of this type of jewel, of this uh, type of earring. So you could definitely do something like that. And let's make sure we get it about right and then bring this one back. So what we wanna, the idea of this is we wanna dangle three of these loops down. So we'll have a jump ring and then we're gonna have three of these dangling down. So if we have one, we have to leave room for um, for twisting, and then we want the two on the other side to be the same size. So let's put them together and just clip them at the same at the same heights. So we're gonna put these together and then get our cutters and just clip them so they're the same height here. Okay, so now we wanna attach the, we wanna loop them on the jump ring. So let's make our loops. Okay, so much fun, I must take out all. Thanks for hanging out for a bit, that's often. And yeah, you guys can always watch the replay and uh, fast forward through the parts that are long and just fast forward to the parts that are useful for you, you know? So then here's one, we've made like a little loop on the end cause that'll, that'll hang down. And then we're gonna do two more to go on either side. So we're gonna bring this here, hang that one down cause we want, them to be slightly, two slightly longer than the others. So we'll do that one. And then we're gonna do this one. And any things you wanna hang down is fine. You could even do just jump ring, or I mean, um, head pins with regular, with regular beads on it too, if you want. So now we have our three little loops. If it's easier to hold the jump ring with the pliers, go for that. And then we're gonna do a small one and then the longer one, and then the small one. Yeah, these look a little funny, but it's okay. It's just to give it a little bit of detail on here. And then we're gonna stick it on this one that we did before. Okay, so we'll stick it here. Okay, oops, and they came apart. Ugh, okay, I'm trying to, I think I'm trying to be too careful with these. So let me just try to do it quickly. Okay, so we're gonna stick uh, one can be a little finicky holding it with the pliers with these little small pieces. It's really tricky. Okay. And then this one here and yeah, I love to try to do the hammering thing as well, but I just, um, 
right now don't have the equipment with me and I don't have the right wire. So there's one piece, okay? There we go. I got 20 gauge aluminum and I can't do anything with it. Oh, you can't stand the feel of it. So maybe it's not a good wire. Yeah, that's possible. So guys, this would hang down here. That's really cute actually, but it's not gonna sit flat like that, but it looks cute like that. So now I think let's do this challenging piece at the top here, this kind of loop, loopy thing that goes back and forth. Let's try that piece. And so we'll get another piece of our, um, our uh, brass wire. Uh, Oh, I forget what this one is called. Tarnish resistant brass? Yeah, tarnish resistant brass is what it's called. So now we want to do this thing on top. And so maybe I should just put it with, yeah, scrapbooking stuff. That's a good idea, yeah. Maybe it's not suitable for jewelry. If it's a cheap wire, it might be better just for um, scrapbook embellishments or something. Yeah, scrapbooking is fun. So now what you want to do is just bend these back here. So grab your round pliers, bring this one back here, and then this is where you're gonna have to measure like how much you're gonna do. And you want might wanna start the curve with a, like a highlighter or a ring cone. So we're gonna bring that one around. So we have like a little bit of that curved shape on top and we can always adjust it after. So we have our little curve shape here. So we're gonna bring that on top and then we're gonna imagine how far out we want this to go. So if we put this one here and then we want one on the other side, it should be fairly wide, I guess. So I'm just gonna make an executive decision and bend it there. So we're gonna bring it here. And then these two, you have to bend them, like curve them around a little bit. We're gonna curve these around here. Let's curve it around. I probably have some old earrings like this in my collection as well because I, I definitely used to buy stuff like this when I first moved to Montreal. So now we've got these here and then we need to do like little loops on either side. So we're gonna take this and make a loop. Before you finish the loop, just start them a little bit so they're more or less in the same position. So if we just start them a little bit, so this is where these loops here are. And I can see already we might want to space them out a little bit. So if I just bring that here and this one here, and you could measure them if you want, or you can just like kind of eyeball it. So if we go here and here, and then you want to finish your curves. So we're going to finish the circles here, bring it around, finish the circle, and cut those ends. So let's get our cutters and just cut that end one here and then one here. Perfect, and there we go. I like your pliers. Okay, yeah, these ones I bought quite a few years ago. This one here, the handle falls off sometimes, but they're from a company called John Bead, which is a wholesaler in Toronto. And I used to shop there all the time, but now they have a minimum purchase of uh, $300. And so I don't really shop there anymore, and I don't go to Toronto as much as I used to. And these ones I just bought in some random surplus store, and they're my favorite pliers. So yeah, it's uh, I have quite the collection from different places. So guys, see, this piece will go here on top, and then we'll have two other little pieces similar to this one that are going to go at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this piece on just because uh, it's in my way here a little bit. So we're, to do that, you're gonna cut 3 eighths to half an inch here. That's how I always do my little loops at the top. And then you wanna do it so this is parallel to this ring that's at the bottom. So it's going to sit properly. So bend it back and bend that around here. Okay, bend that around and then you're going to loop it into the bottom loop so we count one two three four five six was it here let's just make sure it's centered one two three four five no over one it's here one two three four five yeah perfect so we're going to stick it here on that one and we're going to close it up so we'll just close this one up here Maybe get my round pliers so I can access it and then if you kind of stick the end in the top of that B, then it's going to be even more discreet. So we have that already. Okay, and we said all pliers I find here that work for jewelry have 
crappy handles. Yeah, and they, they, the plastic falls off sometimes. I might want to even put some crazy glue or something in it. So guys, so far this is what we have, our little flowery thing with this hanging down. And now we want to add that to the top. And there's like two jump rings for that. So let's go ahead and make two more jump rings out of here. You might even be better to use commercial jump rings if you have the right size, just because they're going to be a little bit stronger. Okay, and or use 18 gauge wire. I find the 20 gauge wire is not st strong enough for jump rings. It's really, um, it's really uh, pretty soft. So try 18 gauge for the jump rings if you can, or use commercial jump rings. So now we're just going to do our little quickie jump rings. Make sure they're more or less the same size. And then cut the ends. We're going to cut one here. And then one on this side. We're just kind of doing these as I go. But often when you make jump rings, what a good thing to do is to actually make a whole like row of them at once. And then you get a, a jewelry saw and you just like saw across them. And that's a one way to do it. So here's the one jump ring. And there we go. So cool. It's coming along, eh, Ken? Yeah, coming along. And we're going to do this. The top part there makes me think of a coat hanger. It does look a little bit like a hanger. You're right. So now what we want to do is decide what loops we're going to hang it into. So this is the bottom. So this, these ones are probably maybe a little too tight, but these are going to be too low. So I think we're just going to try it with the first loops. And if it doesn't work, we'll put it in a different loop. So and all really you've done, you do for this is just stick those, you want to stick like both of these wires in there, okay? It's just going to hold in place like that as far as I can see. This I might have to make a little bigger so it won't slide out. Actually, I'm already foreseeing that, that this part is going to have to be bigger so the jump ring doesn't slide off. So let's just open that up a bit, okay? Open that up and then just, we've made that bigger so our jump rings aren't going to slide like right over top of that bit. So we're going to go here and that way they're, they're going to prevent the jump rings from sliding off. So there we go here and let's try again with the jump rings. So we're going to pick this one up, okay, maybe easier with the pliers, stick this right here, okay, and then close it up. So there's one. Okay, and then let's do the other one. Okay, we're gonna open this one up. And hold this here, that there. Yeah, it might be a little tight. Uh, I think it's gonna be too tight. So let's try the next loop. Okay, so we're gonna open this one up and try it on the next loop. Okay, I'm gonna remove this and one, two. We'll try it on the second one and then we can always put it back after if we need to. So we'll just hold it on that one, try it on the second one and then let's do this one here. So we're gonna take this one. I'm missing some comments. So when I make jump rings, I wrap it around knitting needle. Excellent idea, yes. Or yeah, knitting needle or crochet needle. Yeah, great idea. So then we're gonna take this one and put it on here. This part's a little bit finicky, but uh, I think we can get it to work. So let's put it on the second loop here and close it up. Close it up there and let's see what we've got here. So now I think it's pretty good. Now if it's a little off to one side, you can actually take your pliers and move your rings up a little bit. If you have to, you can just at this point do some little adjustments so you're, you, you're moving your rings around, your loops around a little bit. So here's what we've got so far, guys. It's coming along. And now let's do this piece up here because I want to at least get it, um, you know, on the road to being done, even if we don't get both of those sides done because we're we've already been going for almost an hour. So I'll at least get the basic done and then we'll go from there. So now it looks like there's like a little S thing there. So let's get the little S thing going with our same wire. So let's see what we're going to do for that. 
we can use probably the end of a pen, although this might be a little small, so, or a little big, this end well, it might work. So let's just try it here. So we're going to wind it around the end of a pen, one like that, and then this one on the other side. Okay, so we've got sort of an S thing going here. Okay, let's just check the size. So this is the S at the top. So if we do something like that, I think it's going to actually be a good size. So if we bring this around here, and then this one, okay, this one around here, we just have to decide like how much we want to wind it. So if we bring that one around here. So, uh, okay, so this has, and then we make like a little loop thing. So if I cut this one, hmm, let me just see how much. So we're gonna go around here, and then so let's do, okay, let me just see. So it did a full turn plus a half a turn. Let's do the same thing. So it did like a, um, okay, a full turn, wait, a full turn, and then half a turn. Yeah, it should be good. Okay, so I'm gonna just cut it about here, and then this one too, we're gonna cut it about here, okay. And then we wanna bring the loop in a little bit. So there we go. Super channel says, thank you so much. Yeah, well, you guys are so patient with, with me troubleshooting these ideas because this is something I've never made before. And that's what I like to do on the live stream is just have an idea, especially when it's one of your re requests. I find it really fun and challenging to work it out and uh, and then just kind of go for it. So so now we're just taking the end and we're bringing it in a little bit. We'll do the same, same thing on this side. So we wanna grab the end and just pull it in, okay, pull it in here. And then just with the flick of the wrist, we just kind of bring it in a little bit. So now we've got these little loops going, okay, like kind of like we have in the sample. It's like a kind of a S design, okay. And then the idea behind this is we want to make sure there's enough space above and below to actually put a jump ring. So if you're if here there's not enough space, we're going to have to just move it up a bit. And the idea is you need this part to be closed so the jump rings won't come off. Now this you might be able to do in a different way as well, as well but I'm just trying to follow the pattern as much as I can. So this piece would go here, okay? And then we're gonna need some jump rings. So yeah, it's really coming along, guys. And um, if I had a knitting needle with me, I could do that jump, uh, the jump ring idea. Let me see if I have one. And I have, this might be a little big, that's a crochet needle. And let's see what else. I have this one that's not too bad. So let's try the winding it around the, the crochet needle uh, uh, that Peggy suggested, and we'll just bring it around. It's true, like you, and the advantage of this, of course, is you get very consistent uh, sizes of jump rings, okay? And you really need some good cutters when you're doing these. And, or like I said, if you have a jewelry saw, you can saw it. So we'll just get our cutters. And oh, that's much faster. Thank you, Peggy, for suggesting that. So we're gonna just cut one side and then the other side you want to uh, you want to cut it flush as well. So you want to make sure you cut it so it's flush. So there's one. Okay, uh, there we go. So I'm more a painter. Okay, I'm giving you inspiration. Well, that's awesome. Well, I actually paint a lot, and um, I do a lot of mixed media. So I'll paint a background, and then I'll put wire embellishments on top. So that's definitely something that I've done in the live streams before as well. And I have, um, I actually have my mixed media, media work in a gallery in Montreal called the Viva Vida Art Gallery. So if you go to Viva Vida, uh, I think it's, oh, is it vivavida.com or vivavidaartgallery.com? And you look up my name, Heather Boyd, uh, you can see some of my mixed media work there. So she, um, she sells that in the gallery. And then I also do little miniature paintings with embellishments and sell them as greeting cards. So yeah, I love painting and drawing. Actually drawing is my favorite. I really love drawing. So guys, here's a whole bunch of uh, jump rings. I 
think I've made them too big. I probably should have used a smaller um, uh, needle, but that's okay. It's just to give you guys the idea. So now if we take these jump rings, we have to pick up our piece and stick this one on here and then stick this part of the S on one side. This part's a little finicky and then either with your pliers or with your fingers, just close it up. Okay, and then now we want to do the other side. So same thing, we're going to stick it in the S loop and then here, stick it here and then we can get our pliers to close it up. Okay, so, so far we've attached that. There's a bit of a distance, but it's okay. And then it looks like there's another little hangery thing at the top. So we'll save two jump rings for that. And then we're going to make this little hangery thing at the top. So, uh, okay, earring reminds me of an owl. Ooh, guys, you guys can make an owl like this. Great idea. See, this is this is awesome to get everybody's feedback. So cool. So let's do a little thing at the top. We're going to do like a little, um, that little loopy thing at the top. And then figure out what this stuff is, because I'm not 100% sure how they did that or even what it is. So let's see if we can figure that out and then um, we'll see if we can get it to look nice like that. Because what it looks like is like it's kind of wrapped around, right? So let me just uh, have a minute to think. Um, but -um, but -um, but -um. Yeah, because we can just do a thing and stick it through. Okay, I'm gonna try something to start and then we'll see if it's going to work. So. What I'm gonna try is to actually take this wire and just bend it with my round pliers, okay? And then we're gonna decide how high we want that bit. So it doesn't, this, these are gonna be like earrings for giants, but that's okay. It's just to get the style down pat and uh, for sure you can adjust it to any size. It could be a pendant, maybe it'll be a pendant. So now what I'm going to do is just bend this, but Along here, they're all going to be at the same level, right? So at the bottom row is all going to be the same level. But as you get away from the middle, you're going to do them shorter. So let's just try that. We're going to go that one, and then we're going to do another one. Make sure this bottom level is the same, okay? And then we're going to do another one. How many are there? There's one, two, three. I don't think I drew them properly because it's not... Let me just get my picture up again to see how many there were. Okay, I'll show you guys here. So it looks like, so there's another look at what we're doing. One in the middle, one, two, one, and then one, two, three on either side. So we'll do that, one. three on either side. So that's the one in the middle, and then we'll do three on either side. So we'll go here, okay. Gotta go, my birthday is tomorrow. Oh, happy birthday, Yvonne, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, have a great time. Celebrate. Fantastic. Birthdays are fun. I love birthdays. Okay, so we're going to go here and then down here. So now we have the right number on either on that side. So let's do the other side and try to make it uh, symmetrical with that side. All I'm doing is just bending this back and forth. I'm not making it too fancy. And the idea is just to keep the bottom row in line. So we're going to keep the bottom row all the same uh, height and then the top row it gets shorter each time you bend it. So we're going to go here and then that one a little shorter and then one more after. Okay we'll do one more after and then we should be good to go. Okay we're going to do this one and then one more and then I have to figure out how I'm going to actually I know how I'm going to finish it off I can see now see sometimes it's when you're doing things you realize how you're going to do it so now to be able to get it to sit in on that wire and not slide up and down we're going to have to do a little loop on either side on the bottom level okay so this is getting in my way I'm just going to cut these a little shorter so do you see here's our little fan okay that's our little fan that will go at the top and then to get it to sit on that little hanger type thing at the top, we're going to bend it on its side and do a little loop at the bottom, at the level of the bottom row. So take this, hold this 
with your pliers and then just do a little bit. It doesn't have to be a big loop because it's going to see I've done a little loop here. Let's do the same thing on this side. So we're going to just take our pliers and hold it in place and then do a little loop here. Okay, so we have a little loop on either side and then you want to cut that. So let's cut that off. Get, try to get in the in the nook and cranny there. So we're going to cut that one off and then we'll go to the other side and cut it off. And then what you want to do is just push it so it's flat in place. Okay, so we're going to just push that down so it's flush that it's not going to, you might have to pull it out a little bit there just to flatten it out the edge so it doesn't uh, catch on anything. So we're going to flatten that out a bit. Okay, so now we have our piece that's going to go in the middle. You could fan it out a little bit if you wanted to. Let's push this one in a little bit more. Okay. And push that one out a little bit. Okay. So always use your pliers to adjust it a little bit if you have to. Okay. Perfect. So this is the piece that's going to go at the top here. And now we need that little wire in there. So we can just take any old little scrap of wire that we have left and just kind of flatten it out a little bit. Okay. And then this is going to go at the top. So let's just give it a little bit of a curve. Looks like it should be curved a little bit. We're going to stick this here. Okay, we'll stick that one at the top. And then we're going to, let's start by just bending one end in place. Okay, so we'll bend one end with our round pliers. Actually, I don't think they have to be too big. So let's just bend it in with our round pliers. Okay, and cut it. So that's our one little loop that we've got done. And that's basically just to, you know, hold the jump ring and, and hold the thing in place. And then, Looks very vintage, yes, absolutely. It does look super vintage. And actually, it would be considered vintage. Like if I bought earrings like this in the 80s, I mean, anything over 20 years is considered vintage now. So we're all vintage. So here we go. So here's our piece of um, that we did the little loop on the end. If you think that loop needs to be a little bigger, you can definitely like make it a little bigger if you if you need to. And then we're going to take this piece we got, and because I have holes on either side, we're just going to string the wire into the hole. Okay, just, and it's, if the wire is curved, it should be able to loop right through. So it went through both holes. So see guys, it's gone through both holes like that, which is great. And then we need to do another loop on this side to match that one and make sure it's going to be about in the same space. Yeah. So now we're going to take this round plier here and then just bring it around. Okay, so there we go. So now we have our little piece that almost looks like a little crown. Looks like a Wonder Woman crown. Who used who used to watch Wonder Woman? <laughs> she used to be one of my favorites. Wonder Woman and Bionic Woman. Definitely. 80s or 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah crazy, eh? Year 2000 was 20 years old. Wow. Yeah. That's that's insane, eh? Yeah. So I moved to Montreal in 89 and I was like 24 when I moved here. So yeah, and that's when I was, these earrings were super popular. So here we go. So here's our little crown shape here. And now what you can do is add this with the jump rings. Okay, so we're gonna add the jump rings to this piece here. It's really coming along guys, we're almost done. So we're gonna bring this piece in here and close that. Okay, and we're all vintage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Vintage is good. Yeah. I feel so blessed to have grown up in the in the 70s and 80s, you know. Uh, and, you know, it seems so cliched to say that kids don't know what they miss, but I believe that they did. I mean, we, we I think we had the best of all the worlds because we saw the, we, we knew life before the internet and then we saw the evolution of the internet. And a lot of us, you know, use it now. Like I certainly use it for my social media and YouTube and all that. But I remember those, you know, those very chill days of the 70s when, uh, 
when things just seem to be at a nice slower speed. So guys, look at this. Look how cool this is. So now we all we have to do is these other little pieces on either side. So um, let's just do it. Um, if you guys have to hop off, no worries. I totally understand. Like this is going a little bit over time today, but it would be nice to be able to finish this piece. So let's see what we can do to finish the piece. And I'm gonna cut some more wire. And first I'm gonna make a couple of more springs like that because we definitely need those springs. I just have to find where I put my 18 gauge wire. I'll have to put another piece. So, uh, yeah, never have a, yeah, social media is crazy, eh? I spend far too much time on it. So let's make some more springs like that one. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four five okay we've got that one and then remember bend it back if you're having trouble getting it off the wire so we have this one here let's remove that so one spring and these are really fun because now you can make your own spacers with wire like it's super fun with these springs because there's a lot of uses they it just having a little bit of metal in a piece just gives it a little extra zing you know i like the way it looks so let's do the other one one two three four five okay and backtrack a little bit to get it going let's make sure we had enough this one was a little spread out a little bit so i'm just going to go back and do a little bit more okay so there we go so let's just clip that one here and then this one here okay we can push that in a little bit Okay, so we have our springs right there. And then we want to do these pieces hanging down like we did that one, right? So let's get our wire again. And I might or might not make all these little springs. It's just we're going to run out of time. So let's go ahead and do our little one little loop here. So we're going to do a little loop here. So we've got that. And then we want to put our spring on there. So we're going to put our spring. Okay, I'm going to trim this a little bit because it's a little crinkled. And then our metal bead. Okay, the metal bead goes here. And then that would hang on here. Okay, that one is going to just hang here and then we would do the loops uh, underneath. So let's go ahead and remember how we did this? We cut this to like 3 8 to half an inch. And then we'll do this in this, this, it's, yeah, it's the same direction as that, so parallel. So bring this back and bring it around, okay? And then this is going to loop into that side here. So we're gonna loop that one into here. Okay, we're gonna loop that one into here and close it up. And then we could add the danglies after if we wanted to. Make sure it's closed up and then it'll kind of go into the end of that bead too. So we've got that and then we'll do another piece like that. So we're going to take our 20 gauge wire again. And this is, like I said, this is the brass. So it's a little stronger than, um, than the copper. The copper is a little softer. So let's bring that one in here, bring that back and... Do our, put our spring on there and the metal bead, okay? And then same thing, we're gonna cut this to half, to three to half an inch and get our round pliers and do the loop the same way that that one is done. So we're gonna bring that back and bring that one here. And then we wanna hang it directly on this side so we're gonna lift this up and hang it directly on there, here. And then after that, you see how it looks? So all you would have to do after that is make more of these little dangly things and stick them on either side with the jump rings. So I think we're, and then you could add a, a earring hook up there or a jump ring to put it on a necklace. And that is pretty well our project, guys. So I'm going to take this out of here, my camera out of here so you guys can see it a little closer. Okay, there we go. So there's, let's bring it over. There's our piece. Looks really cool. 
And uh, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to flip my screen around so I can say goodbye to you guys. There we go. Wow. That was a busy one. <laughs> that was super busy guys. Oh my goodness. So love it. Yay. Thanks Nina. That's fantastic. You stayed on for the whole thing. Yeah. So everybody who stayed on for the whole live, uh, I super appreciate it. That's awesome. Done. Love it. Almost done, Clarice. I just have to add those little dangly things and then I'll put a picture in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. And uh, well, the clay cobichon is really pretty. Yes. So definitely you guys can do that clay uh, with the Fimo or Sculpey. And uh, I want more and longer. Yes. Well, I'm kind of losing my voice and... Um, so I'm going to go grab a cup of tea. I'm going to finish this. And uh, I always love seeing you guys on, well, not seeing you, uh, hearing from you guys every week on the live stream. So yeah, next week I have a few other ideas as well. And uh, Kathy enjoyed watching you. Thank you so much. And if you want to keep in touch, uh, join the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club where we share all kinds of inspiration for each other. And um, yeah, and we'll see you guys next week. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Bye.